Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear friends, I welcome you to this Sunday's Eucharistic celebration. Today is the Feast of Ascension, and this day we recall the entrance of Jesus with his body and soul into heaven. But before he went into heaven, he promised us the, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so next Sunday, we will be celebrating the, uh, the Feast of Pentecost. This day is for the American God. And next Sunday, we're celebrating the Feast of Pentecost, and um, we prepare and we ask God to give us the grace to prepare well so that we may be able to receive the power of the Pentecost. Amen. Amen. To prepare ourselves then to celebrate this sacred mystery worldly, let us call to mind our saints and ask the good Lord for pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You see the right of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your heart be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the reasons of glory and his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the suppression, greatness of his power for us who believe? In accordance with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead, and see him at the right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who filled all things in every way, the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you until the end of the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped for the doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you until the end of the age. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Living God. Thank you. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. I say God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. This morning I want to start briefly from the subject, you will receive power. You will receive power. My dear friends, today we celebrate the Feast of Ascension. Ascension. In other parts of the world, this feast is celebrated on Thursday, also known as Ascension Thursday. However, many dioceses in the United States celebrate it on the seventh Sunday of Easter. And uh, our own diocese here in, uh, in Houston, Archdiocese of Houston, there was the reason we celebrate it on the seventh Sunday of Easter as well. The Feast of the Ascension of the Lord occurred 40 days after His Resurrection on Easter Sunday. At His Ascension, the Lord Jesus Christ ascended body and soul into heaven. The Catechism of the Catholic Church speaks of the Ascension as Jesus' final apparition, which ends with the irreversible entry of his humanity into glory, where he is seated from, this, from that time forward as God's right hand. Amen? Amen. According to the Catechism also, Jesus' ascension into heaven accomplished four things. Four things. Number one, he entered into the exalted glory that he made it. Number two, he ascended into heaven in order to send down upon us the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. Number three, he ascended into heaven in order to be our intercessor before the eternal Father. And finally, he ascended into heaven in order to prepare a place for us. Amen. Amen. And so by the mystery of ascension, we realize that heaven is real. 
Jesus says in John the 14th chapter verse number 3, I am going to prepare a place for you and I, I will come back and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. So my dear friends, the Feast of Ascension reminds us that heaven is our final destination. This world is not our home. And so we sing this song, soon and very soon, we are going to meet the Lord. That is true. But soon and very soon, we will vacate this earth. The question then is, where will we spend our eternity? Where are we going to spend our eternity? You see, eternity is a long time. And our stay here on earth is very temporary. If our lifespan is this way, is, uh, is this way, our stay here on earth is this way. The rest of this time is when we spend it either in hell or in heaven. Because hell or heaven are both real. But here, friends, the ascension of the Lord took place in broad daylight on the Mount of Olives. As Jesus was conversing with his apostles and disciples on that mountain, the Bible says that suddenly a cloud took him from their sight. Suddenly a cloud took him from their sight. The ascension episode reminds me of the story in 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. Elijah was conversing with his servant Elisha and suddenly Elijah was taken up in a wide way. The Bible says that Elijah knew it was time for God to take him away. So he said to Elisha, tell me what can I do for you before I'm taken from you? Elisha replied, let me have a double portion of your spirit. Let me have a double portion of your spirit. And then Elijah said, what you have asked is a very difficult thing. But if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. So Elijah gave the vision and instructions said, pay attention. If you see when I'm taken up to heaven, what you have requested will be granted unto you. Otherwise, it will not. My dear friends, whenever we make a request or we pray to God, we must also pay attention to what God is asking us to do. Otherwise, we will miss the blessings. Amen? Amen. Elisha paid attention to the instruction of Elijah. The Bible says, as they were walking along and conversing and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a wide way. Elijah is one of the prophets that we never saw, that never experienced death as we know it. He was taken up to heaven. But as he was taken up to heaven, Elisha immediately saw him. And then he cried out, My father, my father. As he shouted, the Bible says, the cloak of Elijah fell down. And verse number 13 says, Elijah then picked up the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan River. Amen? Amen. Verse number 14 says that he took the cloak and struck the water with it, saying, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Immediately he said his prayer, the water divided into two, and then he crossed over. My dear friends, the cloak of Elijah in the Old Testament that fell down is a symbol of power. A symbol of power. From that time on, Elijah possessed he never spiritual power, even though he did not realize it at that time. He did not realize it. In fact, in one instance, in 2 Kings chapter 23, the prophet Elisha was so angry. He was so angry at the boys, the young boys who were making jest of him. And so out of anger, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, two bears came out of the wood and devour the 42 of the boys. Kill 42 of the boys. You see, at this point, Elijah did not realize, Elisha did not realize that his words had become very powerful. 
And so you and I also have to think of and learn a lesson from this, especially parents. Elijah cursed when he was angry. The question is, do you curse when you're angry? You know, do you say hurtful things when you're angry? And as a parent, as a grandparent, your words are powerful. Very powerful. Elijah did not realize it until these are uh, appeared, devoured, killed these 42 of the boys. Then they learned how to be very, very cautious with these words. We too, we have to be very, very careful with what we say, especially when we are angry. Especially when we are angry. My dear friends, just as Elisha received power after the cloak of Elijah fell on him, you and I today need the power of the Holy Spirit in order to do the work that God has called us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. This is why in the first reading of today, the very last statement of Jesus was, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Why would Jesus make such a statement? Jesus knew that for the message of the gospel to go throughout the world, the disciples must have power. Why would Jesus make such a statement? Because he understood that to conquer this world of sin and darkness, it requires power. Why would Jesus make such a statement? Because Jesus knew that the only language that Satan understands, the only language that his demons understand, is the language of force and power. The devil doesn't mind you giving food to the hungry. The devil doesn't care about you singing and shouting in the choir. The devil doesn't mind you being a nice person. But you become a threat to his kingdom and his diabolical activities when you begin to operate with the spiritual power that God has deposited in you. Amen? Amen. When you begin to confront him and expose his words, you become his number one target and enemy. Amen. That is why the Bible says that from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And he said the violent will take it by force. Jesus understands that to take the kingdom by force, one must possess spiritual power. One must possess spiritual power to take the kingdom by force. You see, the Bible tells us that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. He said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imaginations. And to be successful in this spiritual battle, to be successful in this warfare that we fight every day, you and I need power. You and I need power. Therefore, Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Can you say that with me? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Can you say that referring to yourself? Say, I will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon me. Amen. 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 But yet, as you see, the apostles and disciples of Jesus, they were initially only interested in occupying positions of honor in this world. This was why the very last question they asked Jesus today, the reading of today, they said, they said Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? In other words, we are saying, Lord, we have been with you all these years and now you are ascending to your Father. At least give us something, give us something. Give us political power, give us political influence. Restore the kingdom to us. They were still preoccupied with earthly position. They were still stuck in the natural. They have not transcended above the natural. And so Jesus told them that those things are not necessary and they shouldn't be their concern. One thing that is essential, according to Jesus, is to have power. This is not just any kind of power. This is not a political power. This kind of power is not a physical power. You can't get this kind of power at the gym. You cannot get it by exercising every day. Exercise is good, but you can't get this kind of power by exercising because this is not 
the physical power. This is not what I call the power of the mouth. You can't get it by talking too much. This is not an emotional power. The kind of power the light and had when you manipulate when she manipulated Samson. My dear friends, this kind of power Jesus is talking about this morning is a spiritual power which only the Holy Spirit gives. Only the Holy Spirit gives this kind of power. Amen? Amen. And when we receive this power, the second reading of today says that the eyes of our understanding will be opened. The eyes of our understanding will be opened. We will begin to see things again, spiritually, spiritually. You see, something happened in 2 Kings chapter 6. The prophet Elisha prayed for his servant in Hazim, and this was his prayer. Oh God, open his eyes that he may see. Oh God, open his eyes that he may see. Elisha, the Hazim was not blind, at least physically. He was saying physically. So why would the like Elisha pray, Oh God, open his eyes that he may see again? It was because his servant Gehazi was terribly afraid that they were surrounded by many enemies. He was very really afraid. Elisha assured Gehazi that nothing will happen to them because those with them spiritually are greater than all their enemies. But Elisha was not convinced. He was still afraid. And so Elisha said, Oh God, please open his eyes that he may see again. Oh God, open his eyes that he may see again. And God granted this request. And when Gehazi saw in the spirit millions of angels that were surrounding and protecting them, he was, he was amazed. He was amazed. God opened his eyes spiritually and was able to see and saw millions of angels surrounding and protecting them. That's when he became convinced. The fear left out of him. Amen? Amen. 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 And so, my dear friends, you and I need to make that kind of prayer. Oh God, open my eyes that I may see again. You may be seeing physically, but you may, you may be buried, you may be spiritually blind. You and I need to see again. Like there are many Christians today are spiritually blind. Yes, we see physically, but we are spiritually blind. We do not realize that the warfare is in the spirit, in the spiritual war. We are stopped by what we see and hear and perceive. We do not understand that we are surrounded by angels to assist us in our battles. We do not even realize that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. This is why we need to make that prayer, Oh God, open my eyes that I may see again. This is why we need the power of the Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds. Amen? Amen. 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 My dear friends, when we receive this power, we will be able to convince the world that God, our God is the true God. In 1 Kings chapter 18, the prophet Elijah had a contest with the 450 prophets of Baal. This contest was to demonstrate whether the God of Elijah or Baal was the true God. The God that answers by fire will be the true God and all the people will obey and worship Him. And so my dear friends, in this, in doing this context, the 450 prophets of Baal, they set up their altar and they placed the bull, they slaughtered bull and they placed it there. And the Bible says, they began shouting and calling, them, and calling on their gods. They were putting themselves up, calling on their gods to answer by fire, but nothing happened. There was no response. They were shouting and shouting from morning to night, but still there was no response. And so when the time for the prophet Elijah to call upon his God, he asked them to prepare the altar. They prepared the altar. He said, pour water on the altar, they poured water. He said, pour it again, they poured it again. He said, pour it again, they poured it again, they poured it again. He said, pour it again, they poured it again. And he was speaking that so that there would be no doubt in their mind that his own God would answer by fire. He poured water on the altar for four times. And after this, Elijah now prayed. He said, Where is the God, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Please come and answer me that these people will believe and worship you, the Lord. My dear friends, immediately he said that prayer. The Bible says, Fire came down from heaven and from
consume the altar of sacrifice. And after this demonstration of power, the people were convinced beyond the doubt that the God of Elijah is the true God. Amen? Amen. 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 In the gospel reading of today, finally, from uh, Matthew, the 28 chapter, Jesus says this, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Why would Jesus say that? My dear friends, as I said before, for the message of the gospel to reach the ends of the earth, it requires the demonstration of God's power. So Jesus said, you will receive power. You see, the one thing that will convince people that Jesus is alive is when they see the demonstration of God's power. The reason why many young people today are not interested in our churches, the reason why they leave our churches and, and choose to serve other gods, the reason why they are so much interested in the old gods, is because they, they come to our churches and they've not witnessed the true power of God. They've not seen the church demonstrate it to be a place of prayer. Jesus says, my heart shall be called a house of prayer. But they've not seen that. They've not seen the real power of God being shown. Rather, they've seen, they've seen our churches filled with divisions, little, little groups here and there, you know, all kinds of, you know, fighting going on, by biting, gossiping, and all that kind of stuff. And so they say, oh no, I'm not going to be part of this. They get frustrated and they leave. And when they look at people that should have given them a role model and given them an example to follow, and they see these people engaging in mean, all the silly things going on, they say, no, no, we can be part of this. They just leave. And they choose other gods to follow. So my dear friends, you and I, we need to go back to our roots. And our root is prayer and genuine praise of God. Amen? Amen. We need the power of the Holy Spirit more than ever again. And so as we celebrate the Feast of Ascension today, and as we're preparing to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost next Sunday, you and I need to go to our upper rooms. Jesus said to his apostles and disciples, go to the upper room and there, wait for me. Wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. They didn't go to the upper room to drink liquor. They didn't go to the upper room to smoke some weed. No, they were there praying and fasting and waiting upon God. They didn't go there fighting each other. No, they were there praying and waiting on the Spirit, praying and singing. As they were doing that, the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit came and He came upon, came upon them in tongues of fire and He gave them power. He gave them power. So you and I, as we wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit, we need to go to our upper rooms and there pray and pray. We are, we, we are doing what we call nine days novena to the Holy Spirit. Today is the third day. You should participate in that novena asking for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, and the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you, to transform you, and make you a better Christian, and make me a better Christian. This is our prayer today, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us stand. And profess our faith, I believe in one God. On the 
this day, when Christ our Lord ascended into heaven, we make our prayers for the church and the world, trusting that the Father will answer them out of love for his sons.
that he might make us share us in his divinity, therefore overcome with maximum joy in the land every people and souls in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are clear. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed be the who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble praise and petition through Christ, your Son and Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant our peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernardo, our Bishop, and all those holding on to the truth, render of the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all that are here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer you for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well being. And pay their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son and Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory, are with human nature, which he had united to himself and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, our spouse. Blessed Apostles and Mothers, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Clemens, Clemens, Sisters, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our sacrifice, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray to bless our knowledge and our good discovery in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable. So that he may become for us the body and blood of the most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In the scene when my son was ended, he took these precious charms in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the charms to his disciples, saying, Take these all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by the cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son and Lord, we, your servant and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the charms of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, 
and to accept them as ones who are pleased to accept the gift of your servant Deborah the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask your mighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high. In the sight of your divine majesty, that all of us who through this participation at the altar may receive the most holy body of God of your Son, may be filled with every grace and spiritual blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith and raised in the peace of Christ. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who do sinners, who in your abundant mercies, graciously bear some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and mothers, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Macedonius, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agnes, and Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your servants. Admit us, we pray, to the accompanying of Wayne and Merit, for granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and saved from all disgrace, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Believe and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another without touching anybody the sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God.
of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ.